everyone, Helen Yu here at SAP Innovation Council. I'm here with uh, Irfan Khan, who is the President and Chief Product Officer of Data Analytics. We're going to talk a little bit more about data, the AI, the applications, and uh, the trifactor. So, uh, Irfan, so nice to see you here. Pleasure to be here, Helen. Uh, before we dive into our conversation, why don't you, you introduce yourself and your role at SAP? Certainly. So uh, my role at SAP is that I'm responsible for data and analytics. So that's quite a broad area, which encapsulates a number of portfolio assets, including things like historically data sphere, SAP's analytics cloud, and a variety of other products as well. Yeah. Uh, great to have this conversation with you, Irfan. So how does the integration of data uh, across various business functions contribute to the end-to-end -end visibility and operational optimization in, model, in modern enterprise applications? Yeah, look, I mean, that's a, that's a statement which is a, a very factual statement. That That's the end goal that most customers want to achieve, but in reality, we see anything but that. We see huge levels of siloed data which sit in their own defined environments, and typically customers spend a considerable amount of their IT budgets on trying to just reconcile and get the right quality and the governance and then pick maybe a, a landing point for that data and start building these data lakes. So I would say that it's almost the crusade of many customers to try to build that one almost uh, significant running environment, data platform running environment, where, as we know, most customers will never get to that one single consolidated version. I can definitely relate to that, having started my career as a financial analyst, but I like you to do a level set, right? There has been a lot of confusion about what it is, what really data is, and then when we talk about data product and data model, what are the difference between the two? Mm. Yeah, I mean, firstly, I mean, data could be regarded as being, you know, high value data. I'm not give you an analogy. If it was a gasoline in a, in a vehicle, you have regular grade, you have mid grade and you have premium. And I would argue and say that SAP data is definitely premium because it is effectively representative of the majority of your most critical business processes. So the way we treat data today has to be proportional to the value of the data. And we can use a variety of different sort of commodity storage foundations to be able to manage the, let's call it the economy grade of the data. But when it comes to the high value data, we want to be able to blend that data in a very, very short period of time and ensure that customers can actually have the breadth of all the different use cases that they want to run across all the data that they own not just the premium data. Mm -hmm. That's a great uh, definition, thank you. So one thing I learned today from the session is that SAP now can bring non-SAP data into the mix. That's very exciting to me. So in what ways does unification of SAP and third-party data enhance decision-making process, strategic planning or AI in AI-driven enterprise platform? Hmm. Yeah, so absolutely right. So you, I, we're very, very excited to have the SAP Business Data Cloud launch. And this has, as you described it, a means to being able to unify all data, not just SAP data. So firstly, we have the, let's call it the building block of, of interoperability at, at data level is going to be data products. Mm -hmm. SAP has been a big proponent, the industry at large, those who are serious about data, have already started building large amounts of data platforms around data product kind of currency. In terms of what Business Data Cloud does, it gives us a full spectrum of new services, which have a business framework around business fabrics. It also has, at the same time, integration now with SAP Databricks. So this really brings non-SAP data at a very significant level and then fabricing out to all the other non-SAP data sets, but having a unification under one single environment called Business Data Cloud. So build pipelines, semantically onboard data, and have that single value data going across the entire spectrum of all the different use cases that you want to run. That's uh, fantastic, right? And two, that's actually, there are two differentiators I see with SAP. Number one is a deep understanding of processes, mm -hmm. uh, business processes. Two is a semantic uh, connected data layer. So congrats on making both happen. Uh, how do pre-built data models and industry-specific workflows in enterprise uh, applications leverage data to address global compliance challenges and accelerate, accelerate problem solving. Yeah, so I mean, historically what would happen is there'd be a lot of oversight. So typically you'd end up with a lot of operational overhead managing the estate. And those who are kind of more or less digitally native, implying that they've spent a lot more investment in their data strategies, we, we actually wrote a report very recently, okay, right? that was the culmination of interviewing 1,200 plus respondents across different varieties of different businesses. Those who are in the sort of business domain, those who are in the IT domain, 
and making it really clear in terms of where is the most significant cost that they have to bear. And this report in itself pointed out that only 34% of the customers out there, out of the 1,200 that we interviewed, actually have a trust in their data. And the reason for that is, is because they may not have strong control of the governance or the privacy, or for that matter, even the quality of the data. So the Business Data Cloud is really solving a very specific set of key business challenges. Most customers want to have a very strong value of data, and they want to be able to promote that data for forecasting, for predictive type purposes, building those new AI use cases, so that the benefit of having a strong data strategy means that you can actually enable all of those different use cases to be accomplished here. I could not have agreed more with you. As a matter of fact, I thought the percentage would be much lower than 34%. So good to learn that 34% of people. But you know, you mentioned a little bit about semantic rich business data earlier, right? How does that play in fueling AI power insights and uh, also actionable recommendations in enterprise applications? Yeah, I mean, if you take raw data and you apply it to a model, then it's no context there, right? The data in itself has to have context. And if you were able to, to purposefully maintain and of course the different coherency of that data as it changes and share that data in, a, in an environment where you can start building your agents and of course having a digital assistant on top, then by definition it's a higher value use case, less hallucination, more reliable kind of decision making and the means to being able to really accelerate the journey for most customers on the, on the very distinct path that they're on. And this is what we try to unify. So we have a very strong business AI ethic at SAP. We've been focusing on this for the last couple of years where we infuse AI in our applications and that data in itself of those applications can now be really shared in a much more reliable way via data products, harmonized, semantically enriched across all of SAP, so one single domain model of SAP, and that in itself gives many, many customers where they wanna have the true value of all their data show up and then combining it with the non-SAP data in a much, much shorter time frame. You know, speaking of AI agents, can you give the audience an example of AI agent, let's say in the finance process? Yeah, so if you think about an agent in itself, it has to have the, the means of reasoning. So if it was a best offer for execution, of course, there's a lot of regulations that have come about. If you look at MIFID, if you take a look at even Sarban Oxley, there's a whole host of different initiatives that have come along. And they make the data become more reliable. But the fact is, it's static data. And in order for you to really fuel the new agent sort of based approach where you want to have more of the reasoning, the analytical reasoning, you need to keep that constant flow of data where you can train the models and being able to integrate between different agents that may have a specific role in a particular type of process and then linking them together in more of a kind of an agnostic way where you're not tied to one single use case. You have more ubiquity to user data in a variety of different use cases. You can't do that unless you have fully harmonized, semantically rich data. And then doing so where you don't have to have the constant overhead of having to maintain the data pipelines. Now, this is one of the reasons why we're super excited about having the business data cloud, because it will actually increase dramatically the time to value and the time to market of those new use cases. Absolutely. How does the concept of a single trusted source of data in enterprise applications facilitate the deployment of AI across various business functions? I mean, I, I would argue and say that if you can achieve that goal, and that ultimately is a, the North Star that most customers will have, then you're in a position where you are able to really narrow the scope of the decision making, right, that has to go on before you get to that data. What do I mean by that is there's a lot of heavy lifting, a lot of coordination, a lot of teams, a lot of colleagues that have to typically work in a seamless way to land the data with that high octane value that I described earlier on. If you're actually able to do that in an institutionalized way, and most customers aspire to get to that point, then the rapidness of, of how you actually are able to use the data for agents or for different, even analytics or even planning models that you want to build on top becomes much more of a self-serving virtuous circle on top of that. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we talked a little bit about data preparation earlier, right? That, you know, you're able to improve efficiency, then data integration is another layer. And how does, you know, how, in what ways does integration of data and AI in enterprise applications transform traditional workflows and enhance collaboration across different roles within an organization? Yeah, I mean, integration is a, is a key uh, IT discipline. Mm -hmm. And you could look, look at it from a, a, a process level of integration all the way down to data levels of integration. Arguably on the process side, you can achieve that because of the various variety of different tools and, and of course new services that are available there. But data is a, is a very substantial part of, of the most organizations uh, existing legacy environments. 
And linking data is not trivial, particularly if you don't have a canonical model, you don't have a means of being able to identify how to link and of course integrate data together. You've got to come up with some means of being able to fulfill that. And one of the things that, one of the difficult problems that we were solving for for our customers is how do we build that one single harmonization layer that brings SAP and non-SAP data together? and having the means of being able to expose that in a simplified way. And we've done certain things like having something called ORD, which is our open resource discovery. We open source this standard, this metadata standard for being able to describe what data products are, how to be able to discover those data products in a catalog, and then being able to bi-directly share the data that is a culmination of SAP and non-SAP data, right? So there's a whole host of different things that go on in the integration realms, and some of the work that we've been doing over the last year, culminating in this new delivery called the Business Data Cloud, we're super Super excited that this is going to dramatically help and accelerate customers' productivity. Yeah, I'm really impressed with the fact that you're going to start with building the process, right? And you have a discovery process to walk through the customer, and then there is rise and grow. Can you elaborate the difference between the two from data perspective? Yeah, I mean, rise and grow are two essentially go to markets that give a means of being able to do a deployment by either taking an existing a brownfield customer environment where in rise we take on more of a hosting stroke cloud sort of economic value tco benefits etc cetera, etc cetera, with transformation abilities on top and now with the business data cloud we can allow you to start building the business data layer directly on top of that harmonized from the existing data that's stored within your rise systems and with grow this is really more of a greenfield even mid-market opportunity where you can start even from a greenfield perspective and the benefit of the sap journey is it doesn't matter what point you are on the journey, whether you're starting off from on-premise, shifting to rise, or you're going completely greenfield within, within Grow, the interoperability is maintained now because of the harmonization of the business data cloud. So it doesn't penalize any customer at whatever journey point that they may be on. And BDC, or business data cloud, is really the key ingredient that was probably missing in the past, and from an SAP perspective, why we've been so invested in making this happen for our customers. Well, thank you, Orphan. I can talk to you for another hour, but let's wrap it up with the trifactor. Data, right, AI, about the applications. How is that, those trifactor, how are these trifactors reshaping business models and competitive landscape in the next decade? Yeah, so you said it perfectly, right? So the trifactor is that you end up with these very critical mission, critical business applications which generate data, and that data informs your AI. And if we take a fast forward look, maybe a year from now, three years from now, five years from now, the companies out there that will be successful are the ones that have harnessed the power of the underlying data, using it in a strategic mission critical fashion. And the AI will be able to then inform, not just because you want to take out redundancy, because that's a given. What you want to do is to have actually the next vantage point in terms of your ability to be able to disrupt your particular sector that you may be in. Financial services, you take a look back over the decades, there's always been one outlier. There's always been one company that leads the way and then others follow. With the means of what we're providing this trifecta now, we're pretty much leveling the playing field. You don't have to have a huge investment in IT or historical legacy in IT, but you can actually accelerate and achieve far more in a shorter time period. And this is by tribute to, of course, focusing on the right topics. Well, I heard six to eight weeks you can have the system up and running. Is that real? Yeah, I mean, it depends on the size and scale of the system, but I mean, that, that wouldn't be a bad estimate, depending upon, of course, what the customer's level of, of willingness is, right? Because, of course, you have to be a bit of a disruptor against the grain of your traditional IT, breaking those very almost uh, seasoned environments, right? All these data pipelines and ETL. Most customers have these huge elaborate data tools, t tool chains mm -hmm. that they've invested in. And this does think for people to go outside of the comfort zone in the box that they're in and actually experiment more and actually start embracing. And this is why I would highly recommend people to take a look at our new SAP Business Data Cloud because it expands the value of SAP data and non-SAP data in a single environment. Well, thank you so much, Irfan. And I learned quite a few new things from you today. And I'm sure our audience will be excited about learning more. And hopefully uh, they can see you or interact with you in a or in a different capacity someday. But uh, thank you so much, and then we'll talk to you later. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.